Hey, welcome back to my electric Honda Beat conversion series. It's been a long time, and people keep asking me, what's going on with the Beat? Why haven't you pulled the engine out yet? And instead of telling the truth that I've spent 145 hours playing Zelda, there's something really important that I need to do first. Right now, the brake booster uses vacuum from the engine to assist your stopping power, so when I take the engine out, there won't be any assisted stopping power. I did think about going with manual brakes to keep it simple, but when they recertify the car, they'll do a brake test to make sure the car stops within a certain distance. I'm not sure it stops within that distance now. And also, I always skip leg day, so I don't think I'm strong enough for manual brakes. So there are two ways to go about this. You can swap in an electric vacuum pump, which replaces the engine vacuum. You just hook it up to the same hose that came from the engine. This is probably the easiest way to go about it, but there's a problem. Hey, wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? The other option is to replace the whole booster with an electric one. The hot ticket right now is to use Bosch iBoosters, like the ones in Teslas and apparently Honda CRVs. They don't use any vacuum power at all. It has a motor and a bunch of gears inside that I don't understand how it works. But they're really quiet and super fast. Matt used one, so I'm going to use one too. And I'm keeping the engine in the car now so that in 10 years when I finish the conversion, I know the brakes work. There won't be any surprises when I have double the power. It turned out, somebody about 20 minutes from me had an iBooster for sale. So I gave him a bunch of money and I figured out how to wire it up to see if it works. So two big wires, I'm assuming these are the positive negative to the battery. But then these other wires, it seems like every iBooster has different colors for some reason. But I found the pinout schematic, whatever it's called online, and they tell you exactly which one to wire up to the key. It's number 20 just means I have to pull this off and find out which color goes to 20. So my question now is, if I power my brakes with a Tesla brake booster, does that mean my car is Tesla powered? I always see that title in conversion videos, and I get super excited expecting to see this crazy overpowered Tesla motor in some tiny car. But they're usually just using Tesla batteries, so I guess technically it's Tesla powered, but not really. So, positive, ground, and then third from the bottom, it's hard to see, but it's going to be the little red one. So that is this one. So this one goes to the positive on the battery, the negative on the battery, and then this goes to the key to give power whenever you turn on the car, then this thing's live. So yeah, that's all I needed to know. I'm excited. Why they thought it was a good idea to make every iBooster's wiring different colors, I don't know. I have no idea, but it's all good. Figured it out. Thank you, internet. Ah, coolest connector ever. This is the beginning of my journey to collect proper tools for this project. No more cheaping out. Like they say, good strippers are worth the money. So in theory, if I hook up those three wires to the battery, this thing should be assisting me instead of right now you can't push it in. So um, I'm going to get some little alligator clips on these three and see if it works. I should remind everybody that I still have no idea what I'm doing and surprise surprise something wasn't working. Nope. Okay so I did some YouTubing and I found out there's one more wire that you need, it's not just three. So you have the two biggest ones that go to the positive and negative of the battery. You have this one that is toggled by the key. And then you have this one, which is the second thickest wire. I don't know what color it is on the other ones, but it's just the, th the second thickest. And this one is the ECU that like, controls all this stuff. And so that one needs 12 volt power too. I don't know if this is a Gen 2 iBooster thing where you need the ECU wire to have power, or if Superfast Matt was just keeping secrets. So check this out. Yeah, made noise. Which means it's working. And now, the brake booster has power. Look at that. So awesome. This is gonna be cool. So I guess now I'll wrap up these, keep these away, or maybe just put them back in here or something, and then uh, extend these so that they go all the way from the front of the car to the battery and fuses, I need fuses. There's a 40 amp fuse that goes to this one and a 5 amp fuse that goes to this. Uh, yeah, wiring this up is on the bottom of my list of things to do, but I'm glad at least I know it works. First I have to actually mount it in the car, and that is going to be a challenge. 
First off is like twice the length of the beat booster, and then the outlets on the master cylinders are on opposite sides. Also the beat has three lines instead of two, because Honda separated the front lines from the start. So I have a few ideas, but all of these require removing the brake booster. So let's do that. So here's the booster, pedal pushes this in, pushes that little piston thing, and that pushes this guy from the master cylinder, and that sends fluid out to all the brakes. Kinda cool, and kinda gross. You might be wondering why I took the booster off before the master cylinder, or why I even separated them. Well, let me just start by saying, I went out and actually bought the correct tool for this job, and I still rounded both flare nuts on the front brake lines. Have you ever seen smoother nuts? Don't answer that. Since the master cylinder was now forever fused with the brake lines, I decided to take the whole system out in one go. I also removed the flexible lines that go to the calipers, just to make sure I spilled as much brake fluid as possible. Uh, yeah, wear gloves. Brake fluid is not fun stuff, and my hands felt like they were on fire after this. Now, I needed to make a plan. I was thinking of mixing and matching, putting the Beats master cylinder on the end of the Tesla booster with an adapter plate, kind of like how this guy did on his DeLorean. That way I could keep the stock brake lines. I mean, they weren't coming off. Also, the Beats master cylinder probably has some special bias stuff going on inside that I'd want to keep, and also the three outlets. But making some kind of Frankenstein setup like that would make it a lot more complicated and also longer than it was before, so I'd have to make new brake lines anyway. Which means I might as well keep the eye booster together because all those parts are newer and built better and also I'd probably want control of my own brake bias instead of going with the beats. So after consulting a professional, I've come to a decision. I'm gonna go eye booster all the way with a proportioning valve. I got this one from Aeroflow, but it's basically the same thing that Willwood makes. The only time I've ever adjusted brake bias was in Gran Turismo 3. Yes, that's how old I am. So I'm pretty excited about this. And how this works is, the proportioning valve is kind of like a splitter. Brake fluid goes out of these two lines from the master cylinder. This one goes to the front brakes and it splits off to right side, left side. And the rear goes into this one where you can twist this knob to control how much fluid goes through before it gets to the back of the car. So if I want 50-50 front and rear or no rear brakes at all, I can just twist this the way I want it. Something that worked out perfectly was that the bolts and the push rod on the eye booster are the exact same length as what were on the beats. Here's a test fit to see how it looks in the car. Yep, this is gonna work. The only difference is the eye booster bolts are slightly wider, so I made a template and traced that onto the car to drill new holes for it. I would have never thought a brake booster out of a Tesla would fit so well on a beat, but here it is, like it was meant to be. I'm not changing the beat's brake pedal, so I wanted to use the same bracket, this um, fork thing. I figured I could just screw it off the original booster and screw it onto the new one. But for some crazy reason, the eye booster's fork is welded on, which I found out at this oh. moment. Sure, just break it off. That's, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Shout out to Miramar Fabrication for fixing my um, mistake. They welded the beat fork onto the eye booster, and now it's even stronger than the original one was. And it connects exactly how it used to with the original bolt. So now, it's time to make brake lines. Here are some more tools I bought for this project. 316th nickel copper tube, a tube cutter, a flare tool, this looked a lot bigger online, and a bender for making those professional looking angles. Oh, and this lube stuff for flaring. Don't eat this. I just want to say, I've never done this before, and I had no idea how any of this stuff works. 
or how to make my own brake lines before. It was really daunting and I tried to avoid this as much as possible, but in the end, I had a lot of fun learning how to do it. I say learning, but it was just watching a bunch of YouTube videos. These days, I think that's what it comes down to. Just buy the tools, watch some YouTube videos, and nothing is really too hard. I see it kind of like traveling, you know, going to a new country might seem freaky at first, but once you go there and you see what it's like, it's never freaky again. My quote of the day is, the fears we don't face become our limits. I think that's what this project is all about. So here it is, my first brake line, and my second brake line, and my first bends. Here's how they fit in the proportioning valve, and that connects to the master cylinder like this. Satisfaction. So originally all the brake lines came to this side, and so this is the rear. Um, I'm going to start with this one. Now I have to make it come from there and around to this side, so I'm going to cut this right in the middle somewhere, probably over there, and then have another brake line that comes and connects to the proportioning valve. Now we enter the point of no return, but at least I was wearing gloves. I ordered this Chinese finger trap looking thing that joins two tubes together. I will call it the nut connector because I'm a child. Uh, flare nut union is the official term, I think. This is my first time flaring a tube inside the car and I felt like I did a pretty good job. I mean, I, I guess there aren't really pretty good jobs. It's either you do it right or it leaks. I stole one of Jen's hangers to mock up a new rear brake line. Don't worry, Jen has tons of hangers. So this is the idea, something like this. And to recreate this shape with the tube, I finally got to try out the bender. Not the straightest lines, but it works. Finger trap looks sweet, and serendipitously, I was able to reuse this stock brake line holder clip thing. Next up, front right brake line. Getting these tubes straight and bending them to make them look right is not easy, but look how cool that is. I'm pretty proud of this one. For the last brake line, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna be fancy and bend the hanger parallel to the other brake line to make it look all professional, and this is why you don't measure with your fingers. I have no idea how this happens, it's so off. But I ran out of tube, so this will have to do. I found out New Zealand has regulations on how far apart your supports need to be, so I put in some P-clips to keep everything secure. I was still waiting on more parts to arrive, so I got the booster wired up. I tried out these solder seal things to connect the wires, and they work pretty well. I'm lazy, and as they say, crimping ain't easy. So I think I'm gonna be using these a lot. Oh yeah, and I used Jen's label maker. I know these are eventually gonna be inside some kind of sheathing, and no one will really see them. But just in case I forget what goes where, or if the certifier wants to see these, they're labeled. I did have to crimp some prong things for the battery terminals though. The positive wire needs a 40 amp fuse, so I'm having it go through this box that I'll stick under the dash somewhere. So I hooked up the positive and negative to the battery, and got the 40 amp fuse in here. The negative goes all the way to the front. And the ECU and switch wires, I connected to the cigarette lighter just for now, just because that turns on with the car. and. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna have this cigarette lighter in the future, probably not. Um, all of these wires, like, I don't even know how much I'm gonna actually keep. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna keep the battery in the back. I might move it to the front. Um, yeah, just not even sure what to do yet. It's all a work in progress, just like life. Okay, so, no power. Um, very, very difficult. And now, moment of truth. Um, yep, let's try it. Oh my god, it's perfect. This is way too easy. Wow, it's cool. <laughs> Alright, success! Since I changed all the hard lines and I have to bleed the brakes anyway, I figured I'd change the flexible lines while I'm at it. So I ordered these braided lines from Endless. A big reason why this video took so long is because these are made to order, and they took two months to get. This is the reality of car projects, I guess. 
I'll definitely upgrade the rotors and pads eventually, but this should at least get me going. So now there's just one thing left to do. As you can see, the Tesla brake fluid reservoir is crazy long. Jen said I should cut a hole in the hood for the cap to stick out. But as hilarious as that would look, I'm not gonna do that. So I bought a remote reservoir from a classic Volkswagen Beetle, which makes this a Beetle reservoir. Haha. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Also, matching master cylinder inlets from a classic Volkswagen that fit perfectly. Even though they're in there pretty tight, I figured to make it safer, I would 3D scan the iBooster, model up a bracket to hold those inlets down, and then 3D print that bracket. My buddy Julian printed the first one, and then after some iterative design, this is what I came up with. And here's how it fits on the master cylinder. How cool is that? I'm not sure where I'll put the reservoir yet, because I want to put the strut bar back in, and I won't need the clutch anymore, so I might be able to sit it where the clutch fluid reservoir is. Anyway, I'm not sure yet, so I'm just using a hardware store bracket just to hold it in uh, until the time comes to mount it for good. Maybe I'll 3D print a bracket for that too. So put fluid in, I bled the brakes, nothing leaks, everything works. I did a test uh, barefoot, <laughs> just rolling it backwards in my driveway, and it works. Holy crap, it works. I'm so excited after so long. This has been a really cool experience because I've never done something like this before. A lot of individual parts of this I've never done before, like making my own brake lines. So it's been awesome. I had a lot of fun and it was a nice like introduction into the conversion project, which will get started very soon because now that the brakes work, I could pull the engine out. So hopefully that's the next video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.